Tonight on Missing Persons Unit... She's a good kid. She's a very family girl. Now, Tatua is listed as a missing person. You can't just walk out and not tell us. But she did, and her mum is devastated. I just want you to come home. And the hunt for young mum, Lisa Connery. That's a real concern, you know, 10-month-old baby. Your mother should be there looking after him. She's left everything behind, including her baby, Sebastian. Just come home. Your son wants you. Also, the desperate search for 80-year-old grandmother, Tamui. Would you have seen her? No, I've never seen her. The train doors shut, and that was the last her husband saw of her. Come on. <laughs> You're gonna help find her. And in South Australia, the 16-year-old mystery of Helen Courtney. She very well may have met with uh, foul play. After all these years, her son is still hoping for the best. Mummy, if you're still out there, I'd love to give you a big hug and a kiss. Since we started filming Missing Persons Unit, the things that really stand out are the care and the lengths to which police like these will go to reunite families with their loved ones. In tonight's series final, you're going to see two extremely emotional reunions. Police like these all over the country are mums and dads, sons and daughters, just like the rest of us who treasure family life. And it's because of those values and their dedication to the job that they find well over 90% of missing people. Here at the New South Wales Missing Persons Unit, it is just after sunrise. The new case of missing young mum, Lisa Connery, has Gary Bailey hitting the phones. You have reached the message bank of... Elizabeth. Gary has spent the past hour trying Lisa's mobile without success. Yeah, Elizabeth, my name's Senior Constable Gary Bailey from the Missing Persons Unit. I wonder if you give me a ring as soon as you can on... Lisa, who's 18, disappeared two days ago, leaving her 10-month-old son with her mum. This is a rather unusual case, this. The, um, the missing person we've just sort of found out has actually taken a mother's mobile. She has her own mobile and she has the mother's car. Um, so we're unable to get in contact with... Mum, because she doesn't have a landline attached to the house. There's some 40 k's out of town. Desperate for a lead, Gary rings Bathurst Police, where Lisa's mum reported her missing. Was she sort of overly concerned? Or... Yeah, she was very concerned. Mm. Very concerned. Actually, when she left yesterday, she like uh, the daughter kissed her twice. You know, mm. like she says, it never happens before. You know. Oh dear. Yeah, not a real good sign, is it? No, no. That, the no, warning no. bells on this door. one are ringing ah, loud so and clear. Back, uh, when Lisa know. ran off, she gave her mum the impression she would never see her again. According to uh, the officer in charge, he said the mother was extremely concerned yesterday uh, when they last seen her. Yeah, the police obviously in Baffers are taking this quite seriously as they're talking about searches in there, and to put a uh, phone triangulation on is not done uh, very easily, you know. It's um, got to be very serious to do that sort of thing. In the ongoing case of runaway teens, Tatua and Shannon, Mandy's racing across town to interview Tatua's mum. On our last program, Mandy started her search for missing best friends, Tatua and Shannon. They seemed fine in that before they went yesterday? Yes. They hadn't been talking about sort of going no. out to friends' places, nothing? Just acting normal, they are just out of ordinary. It was a great act because the two friends had made other plans. Check the room, where they had all their personal stuff, like birth certificates and that. It was empty. Then my husband said to me the night before, he saw a backpack in the living cupboard that there's no backpack anymore. All right, bye. Oh, poor lady, you know, these kids go off and, and they have no... They couldn't care less sort of what it does to the family that's left behind. Shannon seems to have done this, you know, a fair bit, whereas Tua doesn't. I think if we find them, the, the key will be they'll be together. They might be, but where? And it's now 24 hours since the teenagers disappeared. Tatua's loving mum, Sandra, is a wreck. I haven't heard from the girls in. Okay. But the pain is twice as bad. Shannon, who Sandra has been raising as her own, is like a daughter. She came into my care about 18 months ago. 
basically her mother just said that they didn't want anything to do with her. She was just a troubled child. But I took her in as like, oh, if I can help her and show her the way, the right ways of life. And But I guess it didn't work, so that's why she came in. So you think this was a planned thing? Yeah. Okay. Because Tool was doing ordinary stuff. Weird things on the net, I and mean, like I don't like she's got Bieber, which is a chat line, but she never deletes her comments from friends. And for some reason, Tour's deleted Shannon, Shannon's deleted Tour. Mm. I just get the feeling that they're planning to sort of go long. Mm -hmm. My daughter, five year old, she's just withdrawn. She she knows that Tour's not here. Mm. What do I say? You know, I'm being honest. I said, Oh, Tour's gone. And she goes, Where? And I don't know. But she hasn't really been herself, so. Mm. It's really, really hard. Meanwhile, in the case of missing mum Lisa Connery, Gary can't contact her mum. Again, yeah, it's way up here. That's where the joke bloke went this morning. We go. So he has to drive three hours west of Sydney to Bathurst to see her. The concerns actually with this missing person is she's left a 10 month baby behind at home uh, with the mother. Um, and that's a real concern, you know, a 10 month old baby. Your mother should be there looking after it properly, you know. Hopefully, we can get on to the mother and uh, see if she can shed any light on where her daughter is. Back at Tatua's home, Sandra reveals that Shannon received a mysterious phone call at two in the morning, just hours before she and Tatua vanished. Probably between 12 and two in the morning, which is very unusual. Yeah. That they, my girls know I forbid them to have phone calls after 9.30. So I have a feeling that probably someone's picked them up because Shannon knows people. Because Shannon has a troubled past, Sandra's worried that she may be back on the streets with her old gang. The last thing I ever want to hear is the cops come knocking on my door and say, we need you to come down, you know? So we found to her and it's not good news, you know? We found Shannon, it's not good news. I don't want to hear that. I just want them back. I'll be in touch anyway, but I'm not ring me any time. And... Okay, don't worry. Too. Thank you very much. Tua, please just answer your phone or give us a call any time, any, any day, anywhere, wherever you are. I don't care if you're in interstate, wherever. Just call me. I will come. <laughs> just come home. That's all I want. Back on the case of missing teenage friends Tatua and Shannon, just as Mandy leaves Tatua's home, she gets this call from Tatua's mum. Oh, because her father rang her up, Tua. Yeah. She finally answered. She wow. mentioned that they were in Woodcroft. It's a possible breakthrough. The call confirms the runaways could be hiding out in the next suburb. So Mandy quickly drives to Woodcroft to canvas the area. We're looking for a couple of girls we think might be hanging around here. Her name is Tatua, and she, she's normally with another Samoan girl. I haven't Shannon, seen her no, together. Sure. We're looking for a couple of girls. There's this girl and there's another girl with her. I think I did see them once before. Yeah. Recently, in the last day or two? A couple of more days ago, yes. A couple of days ago. Now, was, she with, was she with another girl? Uh, big girl, yeah. two big girls. Two big girls. Look like uh, New Zealander. Yeah, the yeah, descriptions yeah, yeah. fit. But the sighting was before they ran away. I'm just wondering if you've seen this girl around here in the last few days. No, I haven't seen her. Have you guys seen this girl around, or do you know her? Tatua or Denise? No. Shannon Wiki? No. Oh, I know Shannon Wiki. They're usually in around the Blacktown area. If you guys see them, just, like, they're not in any dramas, just get them to ring their mum, because they haven't seen her and they're just yeah, worried something's happened to them, that's all. Thanks, guys. Thank see you. Ya. That's promising. There's a few people in there that actually recognise the girls. Unfortunately, it hasn't been in the last couple of days since they went missing, so back to the office and make some more inquiries. Meanwhile, in the case of missing mum, Lisa Connery, Gary has driven three hours to Bathurst to get an update from local police. But when he gets there, the news is not good. Recent, uh... Issues uh, in the previous week, uh, which has, has made uh, Lisa depressed, according to her mum. Yeah, yep. And this is what's created the, the degree of concern we have in relation to Lisa and where, where she is. 
Fearing the worst, Inspector Chris Davey and his team have been tracking Lisa's mobile since she vanished two days earlier. We've uh, conducted a triangulation on the, on the mobile phones this morning. Chris has located the signal between three communication towers in the area. And that's sort of identified an area in, in another LAC, which is uh, over in the Orange area. It's a solid lead, but Orange is a big town and Lisa could be anywhere. That is, until police get this next breakthrough. Yeah, please, Inspector. Um, just got some further information, run it up on the computer. All right, yeah. Apparently got a boyfriend, that's his name oh, there. Okay. Yeah. He was supposed to appear at Gilgandra Court today. Yep. Also, the um, missing person was supposed to appear at Gilgandra Court today, to drive while suspended. Her boyfriend's court records could well lead police straight to Lisa. Well, that's bloody yeah, good. Handy, yeah. We okay. might, uh, might try and give him a buzz now and uh, see what he can tell us. Back in Mandy's search for missing runaways to Tua and Shannon... Please don't hang up. My name's Mandy and I really need to talk to you. The girls heard police are on their trail and called okay, Mandy. I'm not going to give you a lecture or anything. I just really, really want to see that you guys are OK so I can go and tell your mum you're OK. Your mum's in tears. We were with her yesterday. And your little brother and sister, they are so upset. They're waiting for you. They can't sleep. Mandy's speaking to the girls, but she has no idea where they are. So it's still a delicate situation. We have a duty of care now that you're on our system as a missing person, that we need to look at you and say, yeah, they're fine, or I can at least tell your mum I've seen you, that you're fine, and you'll come home when you're ready. But because they're 16, Mandy can't force them to go home. Please think about it. Thanks, Tia. Bye. She wants to think about it. She's going to talk to Shannon, which so I, I seem to think you know, Shannon's the one sort of calling the shots at the moment. We'll wait till the phone rings again. But after 15 minutes, there's still no call. So Mandy makes the next move and rings to tour. Surprise, surprise. They've actually switched the mobile phone number off. Close, but not close enough. Unbelievable. Oh. It's moments like this that make this job heartbreaking. Back at Bathurst Police Station, Gary is still trying to contact Lisa's boyfriend. No, nothing there, just, just music, like one of those things you hook up. Lisa, we know who she's still been hanging around with. That's a start. It is a start, but Lisa has now been missing for two days without any word and Gary is becoming more and more concerned. And what's almost as bad is that Lisa's mum is not answering either. So after a 17-hour day, Gary has no option but to head to Lisa's mum's remote property. Hillen police had been out here twice today, out to the mother's place. Uh, she wasn't there. Now, this time at night, it's getting quite late now. Uh, mum's there. Well, then we might be able to shed some light, and she may have had some news for us. This is Walker. Yes, hi. You got Bailey from Mission Person. How are you going? Good. Nice to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet you too. Thank you. Gary is convinced if they find Lisa's boyfriend, they'll also find the missing mum. Do you know what sort of the relationship is there? Any relationship there, or are they just friends? She had a breakup with him. That's why she came back down to Sydney. Mm. How long ago was that? Three weeks ago. Didn't find Mr. Morris. I think we'll find uh, Lisa, you know. Yeah. But her mum, Elizabeth, is not so sure it's that simple. She thinks Lisa has left for good. Lisa will just give you a quick kiss and away she'll go. Yeah. But she actually kissed me twice. Yeah, like she yeah. kissed me and then went away and kissed him. I should have realised something then. Still haunted by their last moment together, Elizabeth's only reminder of her daughter is little Sebastian, her son she left behind. He's just clinging on to me like grim death. Yeah, he's a solid little fella, isn't he? Hey, <laughs> we'll bring Mum home for you tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mrs Walker, uh, hopefully we can have some good news for you tomorrow. Thank you for your time. Not a problem. OK, then. Thank you. 
There's not much more we can do tonight. So on the morning we've got a few more leads, so hopefully we can wrap this up tomorrow and uh, get a good result. Back at the New South Wales Missing Persons Headquarters... Hello, is that Juan? Yes. Sergeant oh, Faye yeah, Ambrose is busy on her new case, missing 80-year-old Vietnamese grandmother, Tamui. She's talking with her son, Wa. OK, and she was with Dad yesterday, was she? She was uh, with Dad yesterday, yes. Yeah, and they got the train from Liverpool to they Cabramatta? And get up at Cabramatta station. And then, um, then they've been separated from uh, the train. My mum get, uh, uh, get up the train first, right. and then my dad behind it. But before her disabled husband could get off, the train doors shut and they were separated. My dad get up at Kennywell. Right. And then he walked back to Cabramatta Station to find her. By the time he got back, Tamui had vanished. So there's no one in Cabramatta that she's familiar with that she may have thought she could go to? She, she could before, but now she lost memory. She can't recognise things. Now missing for over 24 hours, Faye's job is made much harder because Tamui suffers from dementia. We'll meet you at Cabramatta Police Station. Thank you. Thank you, Wa. Bye-bye. Okay. Well, that is very disturbing that an 80-year-old lady who's dependent on medication for various illnesses and walks with a, a walking cane is actually been out overnight, doesn't speak English. We're going to head off to Cabramatta Police Station and help the local police to try and find her as quickly as we can. Meanwhile, back on the case of missing mum, Lisa Connery, Gary is unable to raise her boyfriend on the phone, so he drives to his home in the New South Wales country town of Orange. We've got an address over there where uh, we're hoping the missing person may be uh, with a couple of coaches, so we're going to call in there first and see what that leads. Other than that, we'll just have to drive around, uh, do our best around Orange, hope to pick her up. And when they get there, the weather has gone from bad to worse. It's now below zero and snowing. And if Gary's information is right, Lisa could be hiding in this house. Meanwhile, in Sydney, Faye is off to Cabramatta Police Station in the west. When she gets there, Tamui's distraught family is already waiting. Way on, Faye. We spoke on the phone. This is my colleague, Hello, Doug. Hello. 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 Oh, how are you? Please not get too sad. We're here to help. Here to help. Tamui and her husband, Sam, have been married for 62 years. Sam. And the trauma of losing Sam. her is just too to much. Yeah. We've come looking for your wife. Okay. Yes, okay. Given the 80-year-old grandmother's fragile state, local police are also working round the clock to find her. Well, we've followed up all leads. We've spoke to the leaders at the Buddhist temple. Again, with Neil Leeds, we've checked the footage of the bus stations, well, of the actual bus stops, and we haven't been able to locate her sitting at the bus stops or waiting near the buses only. The witness. And there's a lot of fears for her due to her obviously her age and her vulnerability due to her um, memory loss. So is her diabetes insulin dependent or diet controlled? I think she uh, takes medication. Medication. Dementia and now also diabetes. 28 hours without any word and every moment is critical. Sam. <laughs> Sam. We're going to help find her. 80-year-old Tamui survived the killing fields in her homeland, but another night on these streets could prove too much. Can anyone please, please call the police? Because we're all missing her. We're really worried for her safety. Back in central New South Wales, in the hunt for Lisa Connery, Gary has been tipped off that Lisa is hiding out here with her boyfriend. Yes, well, up. I'm from the missing persons unit. Have you seen Lisa around? Um, yeah. Gone. How long ago? About five minutes ago. Five minutes. They've just missed her. So she didn't say where she was going or anything like that? Oh, I think just to Manisha's house. And that house oh, is just a few minutes away. Just do us a favour. Don't try and ring them and warn them. Not as if she's in any trouble. We just have to side her, make sure she's all right and she can stay here as long as she likes, really. But probably would be a good idea if she goes home to a baby, you know. 
The police I'm net is right closing. Up. OK, thanks a lot. Now Gary needs to make sure he gets to the new address before Lisa's girlfriends tip her off. Back in Cabramatta, police hit the streets in their search for Vietnamese grandmother, Tamui. 80-year-old lady you weren't missing yesterday. This is a photo of her. If you could show that to people in the area. If you would be able to canvas the shops in this block here, that's appreciated. Thanks. While local police begin their search in the mall, Faye and the ethnic communications liaison officer, Quinn, head for the train station, the last place Tamui was seen. Could you ask her if she has seen this lady in Cabramatta today? Bác có thấy cái bác này ở Cabramatta bữa nay không? Okay. She hasn't seen this lady no. before. <laughs> bác có gặp cái bác này hồi trước chưa? Yeah. No, she hasn't seen okay. her. Thank you. Hi chị, có sáng nay có gặp bác này không? Có thấy bác này không? Thank you ladies no, no. very much. <laughs> it's all star policing. Lots of walking, lots of questions. Okay but still the best way to find new leads. But Faye's not having any luck, and time is running out. If Tamui hopped on another train, she could be anywhere. At South Australia's Missing Persons Unit... Good, thank you. ..an old case gets a new beginning. Helen Courtney was uh, 33 years old. She was last seen on the 20th of September, 1991, at about midday. She dropped her husband off at the BP service station. She then went, allegedly went back to Adelaide to pick up some laybys. Right. Her car was later found, it had been impounded by Adelaide City Council. 16 years ago, when this mother of three vanished, the case made headline news. Police believe Helen Courtney has been murdered. They've excavated a shed behind an Engle farmhouse in the hope of finding her body, and they've unsuccessfully searched the River Murray near Manham. But police haven't ruled out the possibility, no matter how remote, that she may have had an accident and lost her memory. But now, almost two decades later, the missing persons unit have two leads to investigate. One old... We've got a suitcase of clothes that was found near the river. That suitcase was found near Manham, that sort of area. And a new one. Previously, uh, her yard where she used to live had been searched, uh, but some new technologies become available, namely a ground-penetrating radar. Uh, that wasn't available at the time she went missing, but it is now available and I've organised uh, for her yard to be searched with that. Both these leads bring new hope for Helen Courtney's family. She very well may have met with uh, foul play, or she may have uh, started a new life uh, elsewhere. Got to keep an open mind when we're investigating. Meanwhile, the search for Vietnamese grandmother Tamui is widening. It now includes the police push bike squad. I was wondering if you would be able to conduct a canvas on the outer areas of the shopping centre because it's easier and quicker for you to get there. She can't walk for long and she may have needed to get out of the heat. But keep your fingers crossed. Yep. Good, good hunting. Okay. It's very hot and with the temperature now climbing into the 30s, Faye is even more worried about the 80 year old. She's been missing about 7 or 8 o'clock yesterday morning. Really? I yeah. don't know. No, haven't seen her? Okay. Wondering whether you may have seen her over the last day or so. No, I haven't seen her. If you do, sir, can you let, let us know? Yeah, 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 yeah. If you do, if you do yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. Well, I must admit now I'm becoming very frustrated that we haven't had any sightings of the missing lady. So what I propose to do now is to go back to the police station, regroup and see where we can go to from now. Back in South Australia, the cold case of Helen Courtney is hotting up. Her son, Jay, is about to examine the suitcase found in a river 18 months after his mum vanished. Do you remember the case at all? It's hard to remember. It's been so long ago. Jay looked at these belongings once before, when he was very young. Back then, he didn't recognise anything. Now I've got a purple, uh, purple skirt. Doesn't look familiar. It definitely feels uh, bizarre, you know, seeing some of these things. And it's been such a long time now that, uh, you know, just want some closure, I suppose, and, and uh, hopefully we can uh, get some answers. Nothing yeah. rings a bell until this. Uh, this is a white tank top. Actually, looking at that one, looks like I haven't seen it of mine. 
You got one like that, have you? Well, I remember the actual phrase, catch it, when I was a kid. It was something that was pretty popular yeah. back then, yeah. I mean, I mean, it's hard to say with the colours, but it actually looks like a similar to mine. Uh, I don't remember seeing that one last time in all the clothes. After 16 long years, this is their first real clue. Back in New South Wales... This is the platform they come yeah, out the on. Platform that they're supposed to come out of, so... After hours of trawling through security vision, Faye spots Tamui. There she is. There, there. she is. She's obviously the person got, she's got the walking cage, she's got so the black jacket. She's gone back in the direction he came from yeah. and he's gone back the and other way. Just missed the... And there's her distraught husband, Sam, who returned to the station to look for Tamui just minutes after she vanished. But then they missed each other. They've just passed like ships in the night yeah, it. and just haven't seen each other. Oh, where's she gone? Yeah, just gone. As quickly as she appears, Tamui is gone, lost in the crowd. An elderly lady out in the heat, it's about 30 degrees. She's going to be fairly well dehydrated. We don't know if she's eaten. She was in dark clothing, which is going to draw the heat in. I need to get back into the family and try and keep their spirits up. Meanwhile, with the South Australian Missing Persons Unit... G'day, Keith. How are you? Rowan has arrived to interview oh, Helen Courtney's father, Keith. Nice he hopes that Keith will also remember the singlet. I'd like to show, show you a photo of that singlet and mm -hmm. uh, see if you can remember anything about it or if you recognise uh, it. That would have been Jay's. Yep. Well, it's Helen. one thing I'm pretty sure of. Okay. It was... If it is Jay's singlet, why was it in his mum's suitcase? She used to keep a lot to herself. And maybe Helen kept secret that she was planning to disappear. She confided in her mother more than she did me. And even more than she did to her sons. And not long after she did vanish, the family suffered another tragedy. Aaron's suicide. Aaron is Helen's younger son. He always worried about his mum. He'd even argue with Jay about it. what happened to Mum. You know, it's things like that that haunt me. Even now. At times, I'll wake up my wife and say, who's that walking around the end of the bed? I can still see him walking around. I can see Helen and I can see Aaron. It's a funny, it's a funny feeling, but by gee, it's a hurtful feeling. It's very hard to take. If there are any persons that know anything about this, please contact the police with all the information you've got. I will plead to put the family at rest and other people as well. That's all I've got to say, but please do it. Thank you. Back at Cabramatta Police Station, in the search for 80-year-old Tamui, there's finally been a breakthrough for her devastated family. Well, I've got some good news. I've just had a phone call from our office to say that your mum's at RPA Hospital. We don't know how she got there, we don't know how she is, but we're going to go down there now. <laughs> Pleasure. <laughs> so, it's been confirmed. We sent a photo down by the fax machine. It's your mum. Okay? It's good news, isn't it? Thank you for your help. Oh, it's a pleasure. 35 hours of fear are almost over. No problem. No problem. It's all right, any time, any time. I told you it was fine, okay? It's all right, okay? Excellent job. Yeah. I, I, I'm speechless, I don't know what to say. Thank you very much. Let's go, we're going to get Mum, we'll bring her home. Remarkably, Tamui turned up at Royal Prince Alfred Hospital, 40 kilometres from Cabramatta train station, but no one knows yet how she got there. Back in South Australia, Detectives are at Helen Courtney's old house. 
They're following up on a lead that Helen may be buried in this backyard. There was actually a prior dig at the house. There was talk that uh, a new slab had been put down in the back garden with the use of a backhoe, lifted it up to have a look, basically. Um, never found anything at the time, but uh, with the advent of the new machines, well, we can do the job more thoroughly now. 16 years after Helen disappeared, this machine will scan every millimetre of her yard. The piece of equipment we're using today is a ground penetrating radar, we call it GPR for short. Um, and what it does is basically allow us to see beneath the soil. We do use the GPR on Aboriginal burial sites and we're picking up the grave rather than the bones themselves. The radar can see to a depth of six metres and if Helen's grave is here, they'll find it. 16 years is a long time to be missing and no trace. She may have started a new life somewhere else. She may have met with foul play and we're hoping that it's not the latter but uh, you have to be a bit realistic about these things sometimes, so we'll try and find it, Helen wherever she is. Meanwhile, in Orange, in country New South Wales, Gary is racing across town to another house where he's been told Lisa is hiding. He's been one step behind her for two days, until now. You Lisa? Yes. Finally, he's found his elusive yeah, runaway mum. You've been out to see your mother. She's absolutely <laughs> off a brain. She's not cranky. Yeah. You're in no trouble. Yeah. Um, but she's reported you're missing. Um, and she's really concerned about you. We sort of got in like a fight and I just wanted like to come away. <laughs> you don't really want to go home sort of now and just sort it out with her and then you can work something out. Because you've got the little kitty in that at home, you know. Um... We can drive you out there. No, nah, I don't want to go yet. You don't want to go? All right. What about if we just ring your mum and you just have a quick talk to her? Could you just do that for us? Just a quick and tell her you're all right, then you can tell her that you're coming home Friday or Thursday or whatever? Yeah. All right. Just, we'll just come up over here under the shelter. Lisa is 18, so Gary can't make her go home. But maybe Lisa's mum can persuade her. OK, I'll put her on. OK. Hello. But it doesn't take long before mother and daughter are at it again. I'll be home soon. So are you going to come home today? I don't know. It's obvious this is going nowhere. Oh. She's sort of give the phone back. I, I, I'll try and get her to come home, but we really can't sort of force her, you know. Then we'll give you a ring back, all right? Thank OK, you. then. Bye. But it's not oh, going to be easy. Too, so now that's going to make it worse for you. Oh, okay, I don't huh? Back in South Australia, on line eight now? while police continue scanning the yard for Helen's remains... G'day, Steve. Rowan visits police Rowan, forensics yeah, yeah, who've day. checked her abandoned car. Uh, we examined it for uh, traces of blood and hair and, and any personal items or any traces of material that might find in the vehicle. OK. There was nothing of any significance found. If it had been stolen, you'd expect to find damage to the ignition or right. to the uh, steering lock. There's no so sign of things. tampering. The radio's still in the vehicle. It hasn't been uh, taken out. But it's one thing does that, not uh, add up. Helen had three children, and there's nothing there to indicate that the um, children have been in the vehicle either. There's no toys or anything to show the kids. Nothing along there at all. So who cleaned her car and why? See you later. Not a problem. Thank Bye. you. If they work yeah. that out, they might just solve the case. Back in Orange, in country New South Wales, it's still below zero. Young mum Lisa Connery is still cold on the idea of going home. Why don't you want to go home? What was the argument about? I got sick. Yeah. Because, uh, like, when I went to work, he wouldn't, he wouldn't go to sleep or something. Yeah. And mum was telling me how... Um, Oh. I don't look after him properly, stuff. So. Yeah. And so I thought, maybe I didn't, so I left him there. It's the same old story. An 18-year-old with a young child, and it all becomes too much. Just go under the cover, it's stupid under the... See if you can work something out, but get, get down under the veranda there. So you really need to speak to someone about that, even, even if it is just a friend or a counsellor or something. You know, anyone. But bottling it all up, keeping it inside, 
So what, what's what's your final thing? You just want to call a later? Oh, yeah, I'm going to talk to Kirsty for a bit. Yeah. Nikki needs all her experience to get Lisa to change her mind. Well, at least so you're going to get mum ring this afternoon and just let her know that you're going to come home soon. When do you think you'd go home? What day or tomorrow or something? Hopefully. Pick up a little one and then you can sort of go and, you know, it's not necessary you stay with mum. Um, I hope everything works out for you, all right? Okay. All right. All right. Take care. Right? You look after yourself. Bye. See you later. Gary and Nikki have done all they can. The rest is up to Lisa and her mum. She's going to contact mum this afternoon and hopefully she'll go home in the next day or so, uh, sort things out with mum and uh, get a little baby and hopefully everything will turn out beautiful. Meanwhile, back in Adelaide, in the hunt for Helen Courtney, Rowan is hoping her best friend, Shireen, can provide a much-needed lead in the 16-year-old case. Shireen may be able to uh, provide me some insight into what was going on with Helen in her life, and if there's any turmoil which uh, may have brought about her disappearance or caused her to uh, start a, a life uh, somewhere else. Hi, how are you? G'day, Shireen. Rowan Crawford from the missing person section. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Can you tell me about her personality? What sort of personality? She was uh, actually a fairly happy person. Mm -hmm. um, I knew that she had a lot of dramas in her life and mm -hmm. I knew about those. But on the whole, for the boys and you know, for the kids, I mean, she was a fairly, yeah, outgoing, happy person. OK. Did she ever uh, express to you any desire to move away? No. no? Never. No? Never. Never. And I don't think Helen would have been the sort of mother that would have ever have left her children. She pretty much doted on those kids. Which is why it's so strange there was no sign of toys or children's clothes in the family car. It'd be fairly normal for the car to be, be messy. For yes, a bit of... yes. There'd be, you know, cups from McDonald's or takeaway food places. Kids, Lots going on in the car. Like, you know, like a lot of people's cars that have got young children. Yep. From what you can remember, would anyone else use her car? No. That was, I never ever saw anybody drive her car except her. For the reasons that was her, her lifeline, her car. And that's Rowan's best lead yet, that Helen did not meet with foul play, that she drove her car out of her old life and straight into a new one. Helen, if you are out there, I don't know your reasons and probably it doesn't matter now anyway, but I'll tell you what, we all miss you and we'd really, really like you to come back and maybe if there's any problems, just get in contact with the police, but please try and contact us and let us know that you're at least safe. Back in Sydney's West, in the case of Tatua and Shannon, Mandy's persistence has finally paid off. Hello! Tatua has Hello. called back and agreed to meet Mandy at the local shops. Mandy, can you give me a hug? I'm glad you're all right. And this is Shannon. How you going? And Tatua's mum, Sandra, raced straight over after the girls caught her. I'm over the moon. I'm just glad to see them. Even getting the phone calls was the best thing, but now actually seeing them, yeah, they're coming home. After three days, life on the streets has lost its appeal. So now, both girls want to come home. I'm just going to try and build my relationship with my mum. I'm trying to make it better. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's awesome. That's um, better than I thought it would be. They all seem happy. If they can understand at this age that their mum will be their best friend one day, that's a really important lesson they've got to learn. Let's go. While Mandy heads off to begin another case, Tatua returns home and straight into the arms of her loving dad, Victor. <laughs> And that is exactly what Mandy Gale loves most about her job, bringing families back together. In the South Australian backyard, police are still scanning for Helen Courtney's remains. So it'll be interesting to see how this will process up. For Helen's son, Jay, waiting at home, it's been almost two decades of unanswered questions. Yeah, I was actually talking to my sister about that and she'd remembered the same brand as well. Okay. And uh, 
I don't suppose there's any photos where you're wearing that sort of... No, I couldn't find any, and uh, it's most unlikely that I would have a photo of it, you know. Yep. Finding his mum's remains will bring closure for Jay, but also the memories and the life he missed out on. You've still got this, um, you know, hole inside of you that obviously, you know, sadness that wants to be, you know, made better again. Not having you there for, you know, my 18th and 21st and, you know, 25th. Obviously, um, now I'm engaged, you know, looking forward to getting married and then you think in the, the back of your mind, you know, she's not going to be there and, and those sorts of things as well, obviously, you know, for the wedding, so... After 16 years, Jay still refuses to give up hope. In the back of my head, I, I hope that she is still out there and, and possibly, you know, had amnesia or something like that and, you know, started a new life. Maybe she's happy in, in a different state. You know, um, has no idea that we're even looking for her, you know, so it's um, a couple of times I've seen people in the street that resemble her and you think, you know, is that her kind of thing and take a closer look and it's like not, so. Yeah. So while Jay waits for answers, he does what any loving son would do and makes this plea to his mum. Mum, if you're still out there, I'd love to give you a big hug and a kiss and, uh, you know, anyone out there knows of my mum's whereabouts to obviously contact police or get her to contact us, um, we would really love to see you again. Back in New South Wales, in the case of 80-year-old grandmother Tamui, this emotional reunion at Royal Prince Alfred Hospital. <laughs> After fearing the worst, her relieved children are overjoyed that she's safe. Is she happy to see him? I just I can't understand what they're saying. Then another son shows up. Thang has been walking the streets for 35 hours, oh, our pleasure. hoping someone would recognise his mum's photo. That's your mum, mate. We found her. See no death. See no death. Somebody happy. Maybe that a very big problem for me. An ambulance picked Tamui up in the city after a good Samaritan found her and called triple zero. Nice to meet you. You're a very special lady. I don't think she's going to let me go now. <laughs> we thank you for, for, for the police help. You're welcome. It's our pleasure. We thank you, El. We thank you all. We thank you all for involved to find my mum. She's looking healthy. Thank you very much. <laughs> I joined the job for one good reason and stuff like this. It's made me want to join the job and I'll never look back again. Every year, over 30,000 people go missing. Have you seen 34-year-old Stephen Atkinson, who disappeared from the Nangard National Park near Orange, New South Wales, in 2007? Or 59-year-old Renata Wolanin, last seen in Linden Park, South Australia, in 1989 and 37-year-old Russell Jenkin, missing from Werribee in Victoria in 2006. If you have any information, please call 1800 333 000. Um, so we're unable to get in contact with Mum because she doesn't have a landline attached to the house. There's some 40 k's out of town. Desperate for a lead, Gary rings Bathurst Police, where Lisa's mum reported her missing. Was she sort of overly concerned? Or... Yeah, she was very concerned. Mm. Very concerned. Actually, when she left yesterday, she like the, the daughter kissed her twice. You know, mm. like she said, it never happens before. You know. Oh dear. Yeah, not a real good sign, is it? No, no. That, the no, warning no. bells on this one are ringing no, loud and clear. Back, uh, when Lisa know. ran off, she gave her mum the impression she would never see her again. According to uh, 
the officer in charge, he said the mother was extremely concerned yesterday uh, when they last seen her. Yeah, the police obviously in Baffers are taking this quite seriously as they're talking about searches in there and to put a uh, phone triangulation on is not done uh, very easily, you know. It's um, got to be very serious to do that sort of thing. In the ongoing case of runaway teens, Tatua and Shannon, Mandy's racing across town to interview Tatua's mum. On our last program, Mandy started her search for missing best friends, Tatua and Shannon. They seemed fine in that before they went yesterday? Yes. They hadn't been talking about sort of going no. out to friends' places, nothing? Just acting normal, they're just out of ordinary. It was a great act because the two friends had made other plans. Check the room, where they had all their personal stuff, like birth certificates and that. It was empty. Then my husband said to me the night before, he saw a backpack in the living cupboard that there's no backpack anymore. Foul play. After all these years, her son is still hoping for the best. Mum, if you're still out there, I'd love to give you a big hug and a kiss. Since we started filming Missing Persons Unit, the things that really stand out are the care and the lengths to which police like these will go to reunite families with their loved ones. In tonight's series final, you're going to see two extremely emotional reunions. Police like these all over the country are mums and dads, sons and daughters, just like the rest of us who treasure family life. And it's because of those values Tonight on Missing Persons Unit... She's a good kid. She's a very family girl. Now, Tatua is listed as a missing person. You can't just walk out and not tell us. But she did, and her mum is devastated. I just want you to come home. And the hunt for young mum, Lisa Connery. That's a real concern, you know, 10 month old baby. Your mother should be there looking after him. She's left everything behind, including her baby, Sebastian. Just come home. Your son wants you. Also, the desperate search for 80-year-old grandmother, Tamui. Would you have seen her? Oh, I've never seen her. The train doors shut, and that was the last her husband saw of her. <laughs> You're going to help find her. And in South Australia, the 16-year-old mystery of Helen Courtney. She very well may have met with her. Send their dedication to the job that they find well over 90% of missing people. Here at the New South Wales Missing Persons Unit, it is just after sunrise. The new case of missing young mum, Lisa Connery, has Gary Bailey hitting the phones. You have reached the message bank of... Elizabeth. Gary has spent the past hour trying Lisa's mobile without success. Yeah, Elizabeth, my name's Senior Constable Gary Bailey from the Missing Persons Unit. Well, if you give me a ring as soon as you can on... Lisa, who's 18, disappeared two days ago, leaving her 10-month-old son with her mum. This is a rather unusual case, this. The, um, the missing person we've just sort of found out has actually taken a mother's mobile. She has her own mobile and she has the mother's car. 